All right, John, hit us with the short form. The guy met the Buddha, liked what he heard, thought about it for a while, say 500 years while he returned to the Mediterranean, became an Etruscan, seeped into the Roman Empire. He didn't like what they became, a giant killing machine. He went to the Near East thinking, why not pass the Buddha's teachings on in a modern form? So he tried. One dissident against Rome, Rome won. The rest is history. Well, sort of, a lot of fairy tales mixed in. I knew it. He's saying he was Christ. Oh no, that's the medal they pinned on Jesus to fulfill prophecy. The crucifixion. He blocked the pain, as he had learned to do in Tibet and India. He also learned to slow his body processes down to the point where they were undetectable. They thought he was dead. So his followers pulled him from the cross, placed him in a cave. His body normalized as he had trained it to. He attempted to go away undetected, but some devotees were standing watch. He tried to explain. They were ecstatic. Thus I was resurrected. And I ascended to Central Europe to get away as far as possible. You don't mean a word of this, John. My God, why are you doing this? Let me see your wrists. I don't scar. Besides, they tied me. But nails and blood make better religious art. All the speculations about Jesus. He was black, he was Asian, he was a blue-eyed Aryan with a golden beard and hair straight out of Vidal Sassoon's. He was a benevolent alien. He never existed at all. Now he's a caveman. <laughs> the Christ figure goes all the way back to Krishna. Hercules, of course. Hercules? Born of a virgin, Alchemy. A god for a father, Zeus. The only begotten. The savior, the Greek, Soter. The good shepherd, the prince of peace, bringing gentle persuasion and divine wisdom. He died, joined his father on Olympus, a thousand years before Gethsemane. How can you compare pagan mythology to the true word? Pretty damn closely, I'd say. <laughs>